my first job was opening up the first housing program with people with AIDS. Okay. It was Oakland Counseling Center, but it was Oakland Community Services later. Okay. Um, they opened up a home on off of Nash Street. It's not there anymore. And uh, we had like six or eight people there, mm. men. And yeah, a lot of our volunteers were, uh, <sighs> I mean, I, I think it really did pull the community together. Because, the that yeah, them. because suddenly everybody got to be good, you know, and yeah. they're, well, I mean, that is why you volunteer, right. you yeah. know, I mean, and, uh, but uh, it was kind of, I wanted a job I could run for my heart, and uh, there it was, you know, and I've been fortunate within HIV, I've always had a job I could run for my heart or a job that I feel like I would have done for free if I needed to, if I could. Okay, so tell me, uh, you said you saw the movie, Don't Yeah. Club. Yeah. Um, how did you, how did you like it? Just I you know. enjoyed it. Uh, you know, I heard a lot of people say a lot of things about it, but for me, the sadness is nobody's on the, I don't see people who are that passionate today. Maybe they are. When you're on the edge and you're facing something you have no control over and you're ready to fight against it, there's a whole different energy about it. You know, it's like getting legislation passed and finding a way to live. And, you know, there's an urgency that happens. And, uh, you know, that's what that whole era was, you know, like, it was like, what do you mean? People are dying, you know, and... Uh, We've got to do something. You know? How do you remember Ron, and, and how do you feel like he was portrayed in the movie? Uh, you know, I remember Ron. I got introduced to him. I worked through an organization. One of my volunteer things was the AIDS Mastery Workshop, and there were a lot of people who knew Ron, and they said, hey, he's looking for something, somebody to just answer the phones and just be there, you know, like three days a week, and... Uh, and I said, well, I'll go down and check it out, because I, at this point, was in between. I had left the uh, Oakland Counseling Center, and I was in a flux moment. You know, I didn't have anything to do, so, yeah, that sounded like a good idea. I could make money, and, you know. And uh, Ron was a visionary. He always looked for the best in people. Uh, you know, he he made sure to protect me that I didn't know too much. How much did you, oh hi. <laughs> what, I mean, what did you know of what was going on? Oh, I absolutely knew that they were bringing drugs across the border uh, and, uh, and any other way they could to get people, so people could live. You know, that was right up there with my noble, you know, my noble beliefs. Uh, Ron, he uh, he said purposely he didn't want to go into a whole lot of it with me because he wanted, if the government came in, he wanted me to say, I don't know, and be truthful. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he left my, my name was on a few of those prescriptions, you know, uh -huh. you know, from the, to go get the drugs across the thing. He asked me if I minded. I said, no, I didn't, you know. In fact, it's funny because today I have kids who say, didn't you know that was illegal? And I laugh. I said, of course I knew it was illegal. Well, what else was I going to do? My friends were dying. You know, and I think that um, Ron was brilliant, you know, and, and happy. About <laughs> was there ever a point, I mean, you, I saw, I read an interview where it sounded like you, you know, you had some concerns, but was there ever a point where you were actually nervous that uh, you were going to get arrested or, you know, something like that could happen? Only because they were smoking pot in the back room. Now, you know, I mean, I wasn't really concerned. I mean, it was like, I didn't do drugs or alcohol. And so it was a dangerous place for me to be emotionally. But I stayed for like six months, you know, and uh, and he was always, always looking for 
a way to make it pay that he didn't have to take didn't have to take huge sums of money from people who were trying to be well. How do you think, I mean, you said a little bit about how nice it was to see the passion in the movie, you know, what do you think about uh, a studio actually doing this, doing this movie and bringing this story to light and, and getting people to know this person that fought so hard here in Dallas? I am... Um, I was thrilled, you know, I did. Everybody goes, wasn't he homophobic? I said he was straight. I don't know if that makes him homophobic. That means that he likes women and he was not familiar with this community. But he certainly was willing to learn, you know, he because he wanted, he needed brother, he needed the brotherhood to to make it work. Mm -hmm. He needed his stuff, they needed their stuff, and in the calm and good, they sort of supported each other. You what know. do you think it's, you know, I mean, I guess it kind of gives Dallas a name as, you know, there was there was this fight for rights going on here. Um, this fight for, uh, maybe not rights is the, is the right word, but there was, a, there was a fight going on here, a very passionate fight against this disease. Uh, and to, to tell that story to the, to the world. You know, I, I wish it had been filmed here, but uh, I'm glad it was told. Um, I, I think it gave a humanness to it. Because back then, I mean, when I worked at the Resource Center, my boss was part of ACT UP, you know, I mean, where they'd go do you know, chalk bodies on the middle of the city hall in the middle of the night to do an AIDS, you know. And and Ron was the other side. Ron was the, let's find out what would work, what could work. Because all we had was AZT back then. There was no other, there was no cocktail. You know, you either worked on yourself emotionally to boost your immune system and you looked for things that you could do that were nutritional and you looked for everything you could do to stay alive. And, uh, or you didn't, you know. And and so Ron was on that course. I mean, he knew so much about herbs and 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 vitamins and all this other stuff and and he was up on reading constantly about the medication that he brought he knew i mean i had a friend who was a doctor who used to come to him to get his meds you know uh how did you feel about uh, the betrayal of him in the movie do you think it was accurate oh i it was amazing it was a betrayal of men of that, at that era, you know, I mean, uh, people I knew who were passionate about life and who were saying, fuck you, you know, who were, no, this is not acceptable. And, uh, and, and that, you know, I mean, I had just come through, I mean, I was a human rights activist and a gay activist well before AIDS came. And we were busy about trying to get gay rights, and then AIDS came, and the and and the the focus moved. The uh, and and it was a solidarity thing. It was like you know, we had the orange juice lady Anita Bryant. She sol solidated everybody. And then this was another thing where we became a force. And we became a force mainstream. There was no more little, you know, you had to yeah. do you had to do it big. You had to do it big. And uh, you know, for me, that creativity that we lost will never be duplicated. The 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 people that we lost are just uh, but, you know, at the same time, I was talking the other day, and he goes, Mary, I saw that in the paper the other day. And, you know, I remember going to Swiss Avenue and pick, getting my meds. And uh, I wasn't part of Swiss Avenue. I was part of before that. He had a one-room, dingy little efficiency. And, uh, 
you know, I was, we were in the front. It was looked a lot like the, that place in the movie, you know. It was really kind of seedy looking. <coughs> and, you know, and the couches were all worn out, and whatever. And we sat there and we answered the phones. And, you know, and I would tell them, you know, you have to become a member of the Buyers Club. And this is how you do it. And I'm going to give your number to Ron and he'll call you back. Because that's what I, that was my, that was my job, was just to get the information and to hand, you know, hand it to Ron. Ron would take it from there. So I never really had anything more than a name and a phone number. Mm, okay. That's it's interesting how he was so careful about that, but it makes sense that he was. Well, yeah, I mean, he had so many federal agencies that he could have created a, mm -hmm. I mean, he could have sure. been busted at any time. I think um, the article, it was the article that Arnold wrote, um, where he said that the FDA uh, in the movie is portrayed as the bad guy, but in, in real life they kind of turned their heads. Did you have any experience with that? You know, he was allowed to go to keep it, for, keep it going for a long time. Yeah. You know, I mean, if they didn't want him to do it, they would not have let him do it. And I also think he was smart enough to just, just play on the edge. Yeah. You know, he was just as charming as McConaughey is when he's talking to them and you know, he's the minister or the whatever. He was that kind of guy. He had that energy. You know, I think McConaughey got his energy perfectly. Well, that's plenty. Um, I've, I've talked to you a little bit more just because I'm interested. 